Hi everyone, my name is Dr. William Powley, and in this video we're going to talk about instrumental variables and two-stage least squares. First of all, uh, the reason why you should watch this video is as follows. The purpose of this channel is to help the audience learn all about hedge funds. This video will teach you about one of the critical quantitative research methods that is used to develop investment strategies. This, this research method can be used in everything from um, labor economics to to finance and literally within a hedge fund. This is for educational purposes only and is not investment advice. By the end of this video, you will have a basic understanding of instrumental variables and two-stage least squares, which will help you first read the finance literature, and then hopefully after more videos and more wor work, develop your own finance research. Watch the video until the end to make sure you have a rock solid understanding of this research method. One, so you know it later for your academic and professional career, which is actually super important. All these topics are fundamental to academic finance and uh, quantitative professional finance. And two, there's gonna be a multiple choice quiz at the end to make sure you have a, a rock solid understanding. Uh, please feel free to post comments with any questions or any topics you would like to see covered. And don't forget to smash the like button to let me know that you like this content. Uh, instrumental variables analysis. Assume that there's a positive relationship between years of education and wages, right? So what we're trying to understand here is what what is this relationship between wages and years of education? We assume it's positive, right? The more you're in school, typically the more you earn. But can one assume a causal effect of education on wages? That is, does more education cause higher wages? And the answer is no. We cannot just assume that because years of education is not randomly assigned. People choose how much education they receive, and there may be an unobserved confounder. So what does that mean, unobserved confounder? Right? So first of all, we know what it means to people that choose their uh, education, right? You can choose to go to school through high school. You can choose to go to college. You can choose to go to graduate school. But the unobserved confounder is that people with greater academic abilities probably tend to stay in school a little longer um you know people who read and write really well people who do math really well may stay in graduate school or may choose to go to graduate school whereas uh people who have uh who, who struggle more in reading and writing or people who struggle more in uh in math may choose uh not to go to grad school or may not go to college um and so this would r cause a less them to have less years of education and so, and, and by the way, not, it also goes the other way, right? People who have a very high opportunity cost of their time, they could shoot, they say, you know, they can go build amazing businesses and make a huge amount of money working the NFL or make a huge amount of money uh, building YouTube channels or whatever they're doing. Uh, and they may choose not to go to school because they have a high opportunity cost of their time. So it can actually work in the opposite direction, right? If you have a really high wage, you may choose not to go to school because it's too expensive to, right? You can make so much money doing other things rather than sitting in school. So the unobserved confounder, one possible confounder in this scenario is one's innate ability. Higher innate ability leads to more years of education and to higher wages. And by higher innate ability, I mean higher academic innate ability, right? There are lots of different types of abilities. And so I just mean higher academic abilities. Uh, so one, more years of education, two, higher wages. Thus, education cannot be inferred to have a causal effect on wage. So you see here, we have like, this issue, which is individuals' innate academic ability usually leads to more years of education, and individuals' academic innate ability leads to higher wages, right? And so how are we going to discern between these two? So how do we test the causal relationship between the treatment, education, and the outcome variable? And the answer is an instrumental variable. And so what is an instrumental variable, you ask? Well, I'll tell you in a second. But first, there are three important rules for an instrumental variable. The first is the relevance assumption. So the instrument does have a causal effect on the treatment. So what does that mean? So basically what we're trying to do is we come up, the instrument is, is effectively an estimate of the original um explanatory variable. So for example, the previous explanatory variable was years of education, right? This is the years of education. What the instrumental variable is, is an estimate of the years of education. Okay. And I'll tell you in a second why the estimate of the years of education can help us with this causal challenge. And again, the causal challenge is 
we have this omitted variable, which is ability. And so that keeps us from having a causal inference. And so what we want to do is we want to use estimated years of education versus um, versus the years of education. And so the instrument helps us, just to be clear, the instrument helps us estimate the, the years of education. So first, the relevant assumption. The instrument does have a causal effect on the treatment. So what that means is the instrument um, helps us uh, so the instrument causes, um, you to, uh, have more years of education, right? And so here, so that's the relevance assumption. So it affects the instrument that we use affects the years of education. And so you can see the instrument we're going to use in this case is the distance from home to your university, right? And so if you live closer to your university, you likely have more years of education. If you live further away, you likely have, it could cause you to have less years of education. An individual is more likely to get more years of education if they live closer to home. So is there a relationship between our instrument, which is distance from home to university and years of education? The answer is definitely yes, right? Um, however, the next one is the ex the next assumption is the exogeneity assumption. The instrument is randomly assigned to units. So the the if people what does that mean exogeneity assumption? So if people choose how far they live from home to university, that would be a problem, right? Because then you say, well, they choose to live closer, they choose to live further away. That effectively um, is the same thing as choosing years of education. Right. But if it's randomly assigned distance from home to university, then it satisfies this exogenous assumption. And to some extent where you live is randomly assigned, at least earlier, earlier in your life. Um, right. It's really where your parents live probably. Um, and so we, that's the exogenous assumption. The instrument is randomly assigned. So the instrument here is distance from home to university. Okay, exclusion restriction. The instrument does not have a direct causal effect on the outcome. What does that mean? So distance from home to university does not have an effect on the outcome. What is the outcome in this case? It's wages, right? It's how much money you earn. So does distance from home to university like necessarily have a causal effect on your wages? No, I think it doesn't, especially not in this remote times. So I, I think we're good on the exclusion restriction. Um, and so just to recap, our instrument is the distance from home to university. Our relevance assumption is the instrument does have a causal effect on the treatment. That is the years of education, right? So instrument does affect our years of education, which we can see, right? The closer you live, the higher the number of years of education, the further away, typically the less years of education, holding everything constant. The exogeneity assumption, the instrument is randomly assigned, you know, not perfect, but decent, you know, where you live is somewhat randomly assigned, right? It's basically based on who your parents, your, your parents are at least earlier in your life. Uh, exclusion restriction, the instrument does not have a direct causal effect on the outcome. So distance from home to university does not affect your wages. And you can imagine this if, um, you know, people working remotely, this probably is a reasonable assumption in broad strokes. Okay, so those are the three assumptions. Relevance assumption, exogeneity assumption, exclusion restriction. And we have a pop quiz coming up at the end, so you'll want to you want to keep those in mind. Um right, so we went we went through each of these. Okay. Now when to use two stage least squares. The problem with a direct linear regression is that there are confounding variables like innate ability, family wealth, family education that can affect both the treatment, number of years of education, and the outcome variables, wages, right? So, so we're now saying, okay, we know what our instrumental variable is. It's how the distance from home to university. And now we're saying, okay, when should we use this two stage least squares? Okay, so earlier in this video, I said we would use the instrumental variable to estimate the treatment variable, the treatment variable being the number of years of education, right? 
And so what we can do is because the two are related years of education and distance from home to university, what we're going to do is we're going to, in the first stage, we're going to use the instrument to estimate the number of years of education, right? So we're going to say, well, if you live relatively close, we think you're going to have our estimate is you're going to have more education. If you live relatively far, far away, our estimate is you're going to have less education. And so that's what's going to happen in the first stage of the regression. And so we're going to get an estimate of the number of years of education, which is not going to be equal to the actual years of education. This is just an estimate. Okay. So for each observation, each person in our data, we're going to have an estimated number of years of education. In the second stage, the wages are then regressed on the estimated number of years of education instead of the number of years of actual education. So then in the second stage of the two stage least squares, we regress wages on the estimated number of years of education. And the net effect of doing this regression on the estimated number of years of education is the two stage least squares tests whether additional years of education has a causal effect on wages. So using this instrument to then estimate the treatment variable number of years of education and then regressing wages, which is our outcome variable, on the estimated number of years of education, we can effectively get a method so long as the assumptions are met that has where we could draw causal inferences. And then we can say, okay, this number of years of education actually does has a causal effect on wages. So what are the problems with this? So first of all, the example instrument isn't perfect. In the real world, distance from home to university is not a perfect instrument because it could confound with innate ability, right? We can easily imagine this. Faculty members of universities tend to live close to campuses and their children may have higher innate academic ability than average, right? You can imagine faculty kids, we all know when we all to school with them, typically very, very bright. Um, similarly, the alumni of the universities of these, you know, you can imagine great schools whose alumni live close. They're probably pretty, pretty bright on average as well. And their kids are probably pretty bright too. So, and they're probably likely to live close. So additionally, um, additionally, college towns tend to be more expensive and are also populated with alumni of universities. You can imagine Princeton, Harvard, uh, square around Harvard university. Um, and so given that you know there are some questions of are our three assumptions which can anyone recall them what were they again relevance exogeneity and the exclusion restriction are, are each of those met right are each of those assumptions met so can anyone think of a better instrument than for the number of years of education than um distance from home to university i'll leave that with you guys to think about all right, finally, the multiple choice quiz. What are the three rules of an instrumental variable? What are the three assumptions, I should say? One, relevance assumption, exogeneity assumption, exclusion restriction. Two, fixed effect assumption, exogeneity assumption, exclusion restriction. Three, difference and difference assumption, relevance assumption, exclusion restriction. Four, t-test assumption, difference and difference assumption, exclusion restriction. Okay, everyone I hope got number one, relevance, exogeneity, exclusion, right? And the thing is, all these videos are building blocks. And so um, you guys all watched the end. And so I appreciate your, your focus. So it's relevance, exogeneity, exclusion are the three assumptions of the instrumental variable. Thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.